Pirmiausia, noriu pristatyti, kad programą vėsiu aš, Rautai, jo šeitytę šios programos koordinatorė Lietuvoje ir mano kolega Marko Apogačiar iš Kroatijos, kuris yra taip pat festivalio Goranova proliečio organizatorius ir taip pat Versopolio koordinatorius. Ir pirmiausia, labai noriu padėkoti, kad mūsų renginį pagirbė kultūros ministrė Liana Rakite Jonsson. Labai jums ačiū. So, warm greetings uh, from the side of the Resopolis platform. We are very happy to have um, uh, Lithuanian Minister of Culture here with us and uh, warm regards to the Lithuanian institution who made all that possible. Taigi, šiek tiek pristatysiu patį Versopolį, galbūt ne visi dar žinote arba ne visi prisimenate. Tai yra poezijos platforma, kuri vyksta jau trejus metus ir visai neseniai prieš mėnesį sužinojome, kad ši platforma bus pratesta dar ketveriems metams. Joje dalyvauja kol kas 11 lietuvių poetų ir iš tikrųjų turiu tik po vieną egzempliorių mūsų visų lietuvių poetų verstų knygelių į labai įvairias kalbas, į kroatų, slovienų, makedoniečių, į anglų, lenkų. Žodžiu, jeigu kas norėsite, tai prašau ją susirasti čia ir pasižiūrėti. Ir taip pat labai dėkoju mūsų knygelės dizaineriui Tomui Butkui, kurio galite pasimti ir šių metų, tai juodas knygelės, ir 16 ir 15 metų. Taigi, šis projektas apima 13 šalių, na, o į sekančiais metais dar prie mūsų prisijungso Ukraina, o dar po metų prisijungs ir Ispanijos festivalis, taigi bus iš viso 15 šalių ir 15 poezijos festivalių. Ir dabar prašysiu savo kolegos Marko tą patį pristatyti anglų kalbą. I'm sorry, some of you are going to have to listen to this presentation twice, but what can we do? Um, so, Vershopolis is an international platform uh, for presentation and mobility of uh, uh, emerging poets. Uh, it was established and designed by uh, Slovenians, by uh, Belletrina Publishing House. And at this very moment, it consists uh, of 15 partners from 15 European countries, uh, most of them members of the EU, but not exclusively. We had a, a, festi a festival from Lviv, Ukraine, uh, recently joined. Um, there's uh, approximately 150 poets now in the so-called Versopolis pool, and every partner every year invites five of those poets to its very festival, and we publish uh, these nice little books, and uh, they are printed in 1,000 copies per book, and they're widely distributed for free. Uh, young poets, and not exclusively young poets, so uh, the conditions to be eligible for the Rasopolis project is that you published your first book uh, no more than 20 years ago, and that you have no more than three books in translation. So it's not exclusively young poets. Uh, and so these very nice books are widely distributed, they're free, uh, poets really have a chance to get translated, to travel, and I think it's a project that is very uh, worthy to all of us. Taigi, šiandien mes turėsime penkis svečius iš kitų šalių ir iš jų rekomenduojamų, žodžiu, kitų festivalių rekomenduojamus penkis poetus. Praėjusiais ir už praėjusiais metais mes taip pat kvietėme po penkis poetus, dėje atvykdavo vis keturi, tai šiame turime pilną komplektą ir labai tuo džiaugiuosi. Na ir ilgai nešnekėdama kviesiu visus poetus prisistatyti ir visiems turime vieną klausimą šiek tiek susijusiu su tema, bet galbūt ir na ne visai susijusi. Norėsime paprašyti įvardinti vieną poetą, kurio eilė raštį jie būtų skaitę, jeigu jie būtų šiandien skaitę lietuvių skaitimuose 11 valandą. Tai yra, kas būtų jų mėgstamas poetas, koks būtų jų pasirinkimas. Ir pirmąją kviesiu į sceną Katija Gorečian iš Slovenijos. So we have one question before you start, Katya, okay. and it's about um, the kind of the formative poet and the poem for you. If you were about to choose one poem that would be your kind of poetic alma mater, what would it be? Uh, you think like my inspiration or 
a person that. Let's phrase it this way: If you would about to be left out on a deserted island with only one poem, what would it be? Uh, I think it would be a choreo poem by Afro-American feminist and Tazaki Shange. It's uh, called for, for colored girls who have considered suicide when rainbow is enough. Yeah, so that's it. Thanks. I try to. Uh, and one of the other things is that the original is not the same as the original, but the original is the same as the original. I was in the English the Oziroma mora počaka, da jo ostali potrdijo. Išče svoj glas, seveda, kdo ga pa ne. Hana išče svoj glas tako, da pošilja vsem povečni nad tutim pesnikom svoje pesmi. Hana seveda pošilja tudi na netečaje, čeprav jo vsako leto znova in znova pozabijo. Ona še vedno rada piše, čeprav nima pojma, kaj bo v naslednjih letih sploh naredila iz sebe. Ampak ve, do nočem velike družinske hiše, perfektnega moškega, niti redne službe, ki jo bo nekoč morda morala imeti. Hana je trenutno stara 21 let, če pravi vsaki trgovini še vedno rečejo za osebni dokument, ko si kupuje cigarete. Brez cigaret ne more preživeti dneva. Noh te se je pogrizla tako globoko, da se na njenih rokah vidijo krvavi madeži. Sploh ne deluje živčno, ampak je v stalnem čakanju, čeprav ne ve točno kaj ali koga čaka. Pojdimo naprej. Sorry, I just read all of my poems and who reads the translations? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Um, can I read this one in uh, English? Okay. This one is my favorite one and it's dedicated to Slovenian uh, male poets. Hannah and poetry, Hannah is fed up. As for poetry, Hannah would prefer to stay silent, but I can't. She started hiding and burying her poems in the ground for them to maybe someday be discovered. As for poetry, Hannah would prefer to scream. What she loves becomes disgusting in these parts. Hannah will never say what she's thinking because that would end her career as a poet. Hannah thinks, but she won't admit. Hannah wants to read her poems. Hannah wants to publish a book, but Hannah will never succeed because Hannah is not a typical poet. Hannah doesn't know what a typical poet looks like, but she knows it's not her. And most importantly, Hannah has no connections. Hannah has had enough. She's tired of fighting with poets. Why, she would, why should she have to fight for her poetry? Hannah likes to watch self-proclaimed star poets, all made from the same material. Every year they publish a book of poetry. Every year they perform thousands of times, dispensing wisdom and faking love. Every year the same poets win awards, or maybe a year goes by in between. Everywhere she sees the same faces telling her, what are you doing here, woman child? You're not welcome here. There's nobody here but us, atop of everlasting Parnassus. And until we die, you have nothing on us, or how civilization lost its fate. Then they drink and become aggressive and get drunk on their, on their male power, which Hannah will never have. So she just, so she should just get to lost where she came from. She was thinking to kneel in front of them and beg them, please read my poems. They're not bad. They really aren't. But today she is too tired and not strong enough. Someday your poems will be good, but never as good as mine. Hannah won't stop writing, but she, she will will simply become apathic to all the meltdowns and punches. That's exactly what we want. That's why I always like to punch where it hurts the most. And this is the point at which Hannah divides poets between two cate categories. The ones that stay human and the ones that become beasts. Thank you. <laughs> Hannah and Drushina. Na kolena ali v kot, za prednike, starše vrate, sestra, troke, moža. Iztisni Hana iz sebe tisto, kar nisi nikoli bila in tisto, kar je pričakovano, da bom postala. 
Hana, po kakaj zadnji izstrebek sanj in tako boš preživela? Hana, imam zelo rada svojo družino in jih predvsem preveč opušteva. Ponosna je na vse ženske v družini, saj so močne in znajo potrpeti ponižanje. Znajo se narediti neune, ko je potrebno in znajo biti uporabne, ko je treba počistiti hišo in skuhati posilo. To Hana spoštujem, ampak nisem zmožna. Hana in semaforje. Ko Hana stoji pri semaforju in čaka zeleno luč, če vedno pogleda na drugo stran prehoda za pešce, če jo kdo čaka. In potem, ko go dovida in nihče, gre čez in opazujem ljudi, ki hodijo mimo. Potiho upam, da se je bo kdo dotaknil. Hana in gost. Hana je nekaj časa sovražila dejstvo, da je doma med gozdovi, ampak zdaj jo to srečuje. Vedno, kadar grem domov, se počuti svobodno in začela ljubiti mir, ki ga dobi stran od ljudi. Čas jih je pisala kretice na drevo, še vedno rada ne bila gobe in niče bolj ne obije kot menjava letnih časov, ki jo vidi na listju. Takrat se zaveda, so meseci minili, ona pa ni naredila ni česa. Ali pa morda pričakujem preveč in prehitro. Hana nikomu ne bo priznala, da sem osamljena. Mogoče je to bolj obija kot odpadenje listja. Hana je nikaj časa imela svojo drevo, na katero je lahko splezala in nekoč je sanjala, da si bo na njem zgradila hišo. Zdaj so to drevo podarila s nekaj gozda in Hana ne ve, kaj bi si zgradila hišo. Zato moram iti do naslednjega drevesa. Hana in grizanje nohtov. To lahko štejemo kot hobi ali kot obsesijo. Hana si griza nohtja na rokah in nogah. Poleti ne upa nositi otvrtih čelov ali na tekačev. Prste na rokah med kajenjem skriva, drugače jih pori na vžep. Ostala je tem, kar deča plast nohta in ne vemo, kaj je še ostane, ko bo tudi to plast zgrizla. Enkrat samkrat je uspelo nehat in še to je trajalo le dva meseca. Hana se nisem znala s poprijeti z dolgimi nohti, zato se je praskala po lesišču in si naredila ogromne krvajo brez gotine, ki sem jih težko skrila. Saj se je izpadi tudi lase. Ačiū, Katji, jos įlėras čia buvo labai iš jų metų tema ir tikrai labai dėkojame. Ir dabar kviesime mūsų viešinę. Ir dabar kviesime mūsų viešinę Afrodita Nikolavą iš Makedonijos, kuri šiuo metu gyvena ir studijuoja Cambridge'e. Hey, how's it going? Okay, are you serious? <laughs> okay, glad, glad I have that. Okay, thank you. I'm not embarrassed now. <laughs> okay. Um, Fredita, uh, uh, the question is the same. Do I have to repeat it or about the... Repeat it, please. Uh, about, the, about the poem. What poem? Uh, What's my... Yeah. Like, Just say the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, if you would have to choose one poem like that is means like something special to you that was formative for you like poetically personally emotionally okay um well the first one that comes to mind uh is a poem by uh, my former creative writing teacher uh the po american poet sean thomas duarte uh and it's called all i ask for is longing so it's from the book broken hallelujah so go buy it find it read it um okay so you probably haven't heard of it um so you can't know what's formative. Anyway, um, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited about the platform, um, Versopolis, and um, uh, I will read the poems, uh, but I just wanted to say, uh, I like acknowledge the translator who did the poems in Lithuanian. Um, it's written here. Yeah. How do you pronounce it? Laima Masita. Um, and uh, I translated my own poems in English and it took um, uh, editing and stuff and as you may see in the um, uh, booklet uh, it has acknowledgements here for the proofreading and for the editing 
but unfortunately, somewhere along the process, the very older version of the English translation ended up in the booklet. So I made a copy of the last version of the translations that is actually proofread. Um, so these copies are on that table and Elias can pass it around on the table so if you want to have a look of what the actual version of the poetry is. And I could read some of them in English so you don't have to worry as much about it. But um, This is June morning. Junsko utro. <coughs> Magnoli i cveta dvosak si, dur pepelta od cigarata na dedo se rastura kako istorijeta na njegovata loza. Je zapišuva v binarni kodovi, znakov e žena so krst načelo. Baba gi prostiraše prstite kon nebota i alištata na žicata. Crveniot čojen fusta nad mama, što denes go oblekov. Je gasnam cigarata, vnimatelno in gi sečam venite na divite krvavi boki, gi pred žvakovam, za da go sokrijem tutunat. Odni flastovici, ki se rodat. Mislam, koga da gi natopam dlankite vo zemljata od saksijite na baba, da li dedo, ko ga zboruval sam so sebe i pušal ona junsko leto, ko slušal rastenjeto na trevata, bebeto vo stomakot na mama, um, I just want to add that sometimes in my poetry I do make uh, some cultural references to my ethnicity, which is Aromanian. Um, and um, it was a practice uh, of Aromanian women during the Ottoman Empire to tattoo crosses on their forehead um, to, forehead, to um, escape forceful con conversion to uh, Islam, so this is why I mentioned the, this in the poem. Um, next one, um, Dining with Strangers. Večera so ne poznati. Spored čagal. Abraham dojde. Je donese so sebe. Kristalnata topka je zakači nad večerata na trite bosi angeli. In gdje češla me kriljata, I gotavmo od praznината na činijata, so dlankite sledeša sinilo vo let. So noki im gi brojevme prstite na nozete i si šepkavme vo sonot so maletskata Emanuela. Vujko, preddanija zeme, ke jadevme cvetovi crn jasen ili ke si legnevme gladni. No vo biblijata, gledaše vo zidot, ovde se bez race, goli, reče, ja odnese slikata na aukcija. Zega sobota je kako prazna. Neni pomislif o tije za angeli od nebota, se kako na tato nemu beša važno. A fairy tale in two act. Bajka vo dva čina. Eden. So prosil vo dlankite, gi hraniš petlite pred pragot, gradiš kambanarije od glagolica vo sosedstvoto od svojot grb. So poklon gi go prosiš minatoto od prozorcite vo našata kukja, zakačenite porcelanski angeli se studeni, kako koritoto voda vo koja se kapela prababati vrz dlankite sa punica, kožata nakisnata kako krpa, si go svivaš vratot orevo kršenje. 2. Seko je utro ostavaš po jedna trepka vo praznata luka, seko je utro vadiš po jedan pršljeno drbetot, za da se simneš kaj prabavati v oči lik, vek je dolgo barame takvi ko našite. Na zemljata od našijot dom, samo ptici ti igrat mi žitatara, so senkite od fnucite nad zidot, od vreme na vreme dolg je duhot od babati, so metlata vraka, giturka v utroba od violina. Gudalo to go ima zaključeno, seko je naše čkripenje i tišinata od nejzinata prazna nadkazna. Um, this one, before the city falls asleep, pred da zaspije grado. I think for this one, it's interesting to know that um, the, in Macedonian folklore, which I'm sure in Balkan is in general, like we have this like um, villainous uh, fairy tale and we call it Samovila. So there's a reference to it. Preta zaspije gradot. 
Тагата на самовилата е полниот орев што го бараш во чинијата за среќе на редната година. Се одмотува како цврсто залепен подарок што го земаш со помислата, срцата на самовилите се мирни како портокалите за прошка. Каде се свива коленото на самовилата, никој не прашува, ниту зошто бебињата ги успива со ехото од минаринјата. Не знае зошто по старите молчат во црква, а кај креветот се молат на глас. Прекуден талка по улиците, ги храни загубените патници, ги гледа возовите играчки на первазите, по некоја рака вода на цаксиите. Се прашува зошто ги хранат растенијата, а ги убиваат уличните кучиња. Навечер ги следи белите прамени коса на патот, за да се врати дома, помеѓу небото и земјата, пред да заспие градот, мајките со цигара враце, ја туркаат од недоречените бајки. And uh, I will read this one in English, uh, and it's Equinox, page 16, on the printed copy. Mm. 15. <clears throat> Equinox. Break the bread, whisper to the wasp nest, tomorrow the hornets will live, leave death on my left hand. A moss of your size the kids will mistake for mildew, asleep in the dining room they'll be curing, their inherited allergies are stolen memories. You, in the red dress, the mall by your left eye in mind, the field where we lost our ancestors with the soft of the bread we fed the birds, with the softness of honey, our kids lying. This is my body. Take it. Long after, they will bend their hats over the dinner table, draw the curtains, knowing the sun always sets around five o'clock. In the dark, the faces on the family photos can't see, but won't close their eyes. Um, and this one uh, is um, in the gust of wind. Во налетот на ветрот. Еве го гледалото што го бараш. Ова парче стакло во кое се огледува нашиот Бог. Прости ми, ке речеш во себе пред мостот мравки во срцето на честакот. Погледни. Сенката од кукичката на полжавот го крие белегот на тревата по кој се разликува од недопреното стебло. Види, мајчина душичка, може би кај цветов сребрените патеки се невидливи за голо око, но сонцето ми ги вдлабнува во дланките како седе в украсна рамка од огледала. Со часови ке преговараме за вистината, но овде веќе се е предвидливо. Одлуката на јачмен од да процвета е одлука да умре. Овде дождот им се враќа на птиците во вдлобнатините од патот. Во паркот едно бебе цица од градата на мајка си ја чита воздушната патека на лостовиците над нашите глави, уште пред да научи и да каже «Мамо, знам што ке изустиш, уште пред да ја накривиш усната во правецот каде што мртвите ги испракјаме». Во право си, во, дал... во налетот на ветрот, никој не е безбеден, но ноките се минуваат како ништо да не е тајно. And the last one? Не. Кребовницкиот кревет имаше топо круг крв. Чело врз незиното чело, дланка врз незината дланка, Песната на радиото на исходникот, заборавените бабушки во собата, со известување на вратата, посетители после пет, се изјапа на кирилицата од чоколадните кути, саксиите со магнолии на терасите, мокри далиште испружени на жиците и светкавите антени на високите покреви, одвај може да ја принесат топлината, што некогаш се имаше во утровата. Thank you so much.
aš labai Afroditai ir nepristačiau vertėjus į lietuvių kalbą, tai Katja Gorečian ir Afrodita Nikolova vertė laimą masytę, dėl jie negalėjo dalyvauti festivalyje. Na ir dabar noriu kviesti mūsų viešnę Hanna Lau iš Jungtinės karalystės ir jos įlieraščius vertė Dominikas Norkūnas. Have a poem ready for us. Uh, the question? Yeah, yeah the um, secret question. Yeah, the secret question. Yeah, and well, maybe I had time to think about it, right? So maybe two? Yeah. Yeah, one would or be. Three. Or three? Uh, okay, one would be Sharon Olds, The Race. Uh, just because I love Sharon Olds' mm -hmm. kind of intimate writing and that confessional style has been a big influence. But the other one would be a poem, a poet from the Caribbean who died last year, Joe Walcott. And the poem would be The Schooner Fly, which is this very epic kind of tale of a, about a man that leaves the Caribbean. Better hopes and dreams. Thanks, Sharon. The floor is yours. Great. OK, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about my poems because they may not, uh, not make uh, much sense without uh, introduction. So I apologise for anyone that can't follow. Hopefully there's enough in the Lithuanian uh, translations. I have to say, I'm so grateful to the festival uh, for inviting me, but also to whoever translated these poems. I have to say, I've been walking around for three days thinking that Juntini Carol Lesti was the translator, and I only realised this morning it's actually the United Kingdom. Anyway, I'm very grateful to Juntini for her translations of my poems. So the first poem is, uh, is about my... Uh, so my dad was from Jamaica. He was half black Jamaican and half Chinese. And my mom is white and English. And my parents met because my mom was going out with my dad's cousin, who was a Jamaican saxophonist called Joe Harriet. And Joe was prolific, a saxophonist in the 1950s and 60s. But he died uh, tragically young at 42 and very much neglected by the music industry. So in this poem, I, let, I allow myself the opportunity to have met Joe uh, in, in history, I guess. And um, so I guess you need to know that the 1950s and 60s, to be a black man in England would have been very difficult. Um, and at one point, I mentioned someone called Richard. Richard's my partner, who's also a poet. And when I said, uh, you know, I was doing these poems, Richard said, well, you can't just make up things about historical figures. And you know, we were talking uh, yesterday about patriarchy, so I thought, well, don't tell me what I can do in my poems. I'm going to put you in this poem. So he is in it uh, as well. If you believe on Salmon Lane. If you believe I saw Joe Harriet play in 1956 and in my good blue dress danced all night in that basement dive below Gerard Street, Joe howling through his sacks, white shirt, sweat soaked and gleaming in the spotlight, you may as well believe anything I dream on listening to his music, the way he smelt up close, say, with cigarettes and cloves, when we took a corner table at the new friends on Salmon Lane, gnawing the vibs he loved, and in between chews just talking to me in that fatherly way he had. You may as well believe that sometimes I put his records on and just start crying and can't stop crying, don't even know what I'm crying for. Those decades in history when men like Joe and my father were shadows on English streets or just the way a melody can get you. I walk the small rooms of my flat, light spilling through the sky tops, the treetops just in sight through the glass, and even with all these tears, I'm sort of happy. Richard says, be careful what you do in poems to real people, known people. But surely this poem shows it seems enough to let me wish that Joe didn't start dying so young at gigs he couldn't even stand up straight to play, that men he used to jam with didn't see his broken body shuffle <coughs> down the streets and turn away. And those last morphine days, the dog he saw barking at the window of the third floor ward really wasn't there. Well, how could it be if Joe and me just stepped from the club into this winter night, heading arm in arm down Brewer Street to order steaming bowls of wonton soup? Uh, the next poem is in my mum's voice. So when I uh, wanted to know more about Joe Harrier, I talked to my mum. Uh, and uh, 
I don't think Joe was a very good boyfriend. Uh, in fact, someone said about Joe Harriet that um, if saxophonists had been developed from amoeba millions of years ago, that's what Joe was. He wasn't really a person, meaning that he like was a brilliant musician, quite a good uh, drinker, and a lousy uh, boyfriend. So when my mum talks about Joe, she often swears, and uh, sometimes she breaks into song as well. So uh, uh, you also, I guess, you need to know that when I say mum in the poem, I mean my grandmother. And um, my grandmother was, there's no other way to say it, was a, a racist. And she was very disapproving of my mum going out with Joe and with my dad. So she features in the poem as well. Cherokee. You phoned me up, a party, would I go? My mum said, Joe, who's Joe? A darkie? No, not on your Nelly lady. No, you won't you. Peach lipstick, lacquered beehive, tweed mist perfume. I took the bus and of course there was no party, just a room with whiskey glasses on the bedside and fag ash on the tangled sheets at dawn. Or Joe could play an ace, the Aki blues and Cherokee. Da, 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 da. He put his sacks in hock to pay the rent, said, Betty, can you help me? Had a pound off me on Sunday nights. He had it bad. He'd not been with another girl in weeks. And no, my mother didn't sleep a wink. She sobbed into her mixing bowl. And off we went to Auntie Connie's caravan. He wore his suit and wingtips on the dunes. He said he loved me in the spinning teacups, then vanished in the night. Oh, you knew a tune, that bastard arsehole drunk. <laughs> You'll never know. And Cherokee. Da, 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 And no, I couldn't bring him home for Christmas. Not over my dead body, lady. No. He came with flick knife smile and lilac bath cubes. And oh, she sobbed into her mixing bowl. My father walked into the tube, came home and stank of whiskey, said, he's just like any other fella. Ain't he, Betty? Ain't he? So in the, the next poem, What I Know, uh, I suppose I take on the voice of a man like my father who came from Jamaica to uh, Britain um, in the late 1940s. And I use the metaphor of like throwing dice, uh, kind of metaphor as gambling for migration, like the idea of like chucking in a hand of cards and picking up a new hand in a way. And so each stanza of the poem it's about the thought of leaving, the decision to leave, the journey, and then arriving in a quite a hostile Britain uh, in, the 19, in the late 1940s. And the form is a glossa, which some of you may uh, be familiar with or write yourselves, which it means it takes four lines from another poem and uses them as a structure. Each line of the stanza finishes with uh, the line of the, the poem that I borrowed from, and the poem is the Theodore Recchi poem, The Waking. So I'll read those lines first. Um, this shaking keeps me steady, I should know. What falls away is always and is near. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. I learn by going where I have to go. At night you'll find me at the oil lamp, dice in hand. I say to myself, if I throw a pair of fives, I'll give up this life. The hot, slow days of hurricanes, sweet reek of banana rot, black fruit on the vine. I want another hand of chances. I grip the dice and blow a gust of luck into my fist. I'm dreaming of England, yes, work, yes, women, riches. I shake these bone cubes hard, let go. This shaking keeps me steady, I should know. The radio fizzes news across the tenement yard. Dazed soldiers sailing home, a weekend parade, monsoon time coming. I pass dead horses in the field, dead mules. Men sag like slack suits in the square. Talk of leaving, starks like rain, slow and spare, a rattle in a can. My tears aren't for the ship, new places, strange people, but the loss of my always faces, I mean my people, who I know. My sister says, you carry them with you, don't fear. What falls away is always and is near. The ship rocks steady across the ocean. You ever look out to sea, and on every side is sky and water, too much, too blue. Thoughts lap at me like waves against the bow, not where I am, but why and who. 
At night we use our hours up, ten fellows flop to someone's sticky room. I roll the dice or deal for shemmy, brad pontoon. We go till dawn, a huddle at the lamp turned low. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. Some fellows swore there were diamonds on these streets. Look hard enough in rain and you'll see them. I squint my eyes, but what I see is sunshine on the dock. My, my mother's white gloves waving me goodbye. There's no diamonds here, or if there are, they're under the skin of snow. Seems the whole world's gone white. I roll my dice in basements below these English pavements. I guess I'm learning what I need to know. I learn by going where I have to go. Um, I'm going to skip a poem, because my poems are long, so we're going to move over one. I'm going to read two more. Uh, so I'm going to read the poem in my father's notebook. And um, uh, so after my dad died, when I, uh, when I was in my early 20s, some years later, I found a notebook that he had written about his early life growing up in Jamaica. And I think as a child, you know, I knew I had a Chinese grandfather in Jamaica, but I kind of thought like my Chinese grandfather had just made a wrong turning somewhere on his way somewhere else and had ended up in Jamaica. Like I didn't realise there was like a, like a big Chinese community. And my grandfather, so Lo, the name is a Chinese name, my surname. My grandfather was a shopkeeper, a Chinese shopkeeper, like many of the Chinese in Jamaica. Uh, but my dad had a really, really difficult upbringing with his father. He didn't really see his mother. And uh, in the notebook, it seems that my grandfather gets married on every other page, but there's no divorces <laughs> ever mentioned. So in, the, uh, in, in this poem, which is all found material, it's all my father's words, you hear the, the succession of women and children, my, my father's half-siblings. Half, uh, um, yeah, so the only thing I've done really is edit the poem and uh, it's my dad talking about his father, uh, my Chinese grandfather. My father's notebook. I do not know the exact date of birth, of arrival to the island. He hardly ever spoke except to give commands. Most nights he was nowhere to be found. I would walk the empty rooms crying for him or go out into the road. Once a woman saw me on the bridge and brought me home. After, he tied me to my bed with rope. He lost all his money three times, burnt down our shop, the dogs trapped below the galvanised roof. He gave me an orange and we drove off. He had a cousin across the river, a waterfall cascaded on the road, and my father carried me over. He got married the first time in Mocho, but I cannot recall the lady's name, only she was nearly white. Her father was McCormick, but had a baby, and her name was Gloria. He opened a new shop, bare shelves for months. We slept in the back with Linda Bloomfield. I heard them in the night. I cannot recall if they were married. He went to Kingston for days to play mahjong, came home angry, beat me with his belt. I can still recall the heat and smell of him, of sweetness and liquor. He had children in villages all over. He got married to Bonella. I saw babies and never saw them again. I held a baby called Zita, my sister. Last time I saw him, he begged me for money. He was smaller. The time before, I'd held his gun to his head while he slept, but I didn't pull the trigger. He died in 1963 or 1964. I can't remember. And I'm going to finish with this. I think, I hope it's interesting. I'm not sure, I'm never sure if these poems are interesting or like really annoying. This form that I kind of, I guess, like, I don't know if anyone else has done it, probably there is a precedent, but I came up with this idea. Uh, it was to do with, um, the idea of being two things, or in my case, maybe three things at once, uh, and of juxtaposing some of those ideas, is also about how my present life, so often the past and my kind of like the, the ancestry, the stories of my family, intrude on my present life in a good way. So, and sometimes it's about how um, history as a kind of public idea might be juxtaposed with history as it's experienced personally. And I think that's what I'm trying to do in this poem. So high yellow is a term, I'm, I'm very interested in skin colour, perhaps because my skin doesn't bear uh, the marks of my, of my true self, I suppose. Like I don't 
you wouldn't look at me, or maybe anyone, anyone would look at me and think, oh, she's Jamaican, but I'm <laughs> part Jamaican. So I'm interested in the way in which um, we've talked about skin colour in the past and the way in which we continue to do. So the story of this poem is about going to um, Jamaica about four years ago to do some research. I was pregnant with my son, it's a very woozy time, very, like an early pregnancy. And uh, I was driving to a place on the far west coast of Jamaica where the people there are called the Red Men of Jamaica because they have kind of African features but very light skin and red curly hair. And there's a kind of myth around that that exists, which is that um, a, sh a ship full of Scotsmen um, was shipwrecked in the you know, 1700s and all these Scottishmen with bright red hair swam ashore and, uh, you know, romanced the local black women, and that's how this look came about. But the truth of it is much, much more um, insidious and violent, and it's about the Scottish involvement in the slave trade. So I'm going to read, if you'll permit me, I'll read both the poems separately, and then I'll read it together, uh, just perhaps to get a feel of the way in which I was trying to suggest that you can read this poem in three different ways. Have I got time for this? Okay. <laughs> Errol drives me to Treasure Beach, swerving the bleak country roads. I think about what you will be, your mix, white, black, Chinese, and your father's Scottish Englishness. We cross the Black River, where they shipped cane sugar and molasses upstream, past a sign for lover's leap. The air stinks of sulphur. Errol drops me at a green gate. Be safe. Behind the house, the narrow beach of dark sand, the seawater warm and grey. I am deep before I know it, groundless, the swell stops the sickness. Under a crooked tree, perched on sea rocks, two fishermen in torn denim smoking. I dry in the sun, they pass, turn, come close. They've rust afros, gold faces splashed with freckles, one edged in muscle, one with eyes like razors. What you want here, they say. It's an old story, the terrible storm, the ship going down, half the sailors drowned, half swimming, the slate waves spat hard on shore, smashed grates, bodies choking on the dark sand. One man stands, what is this place? A woman in the trees, one hand raised. This is how the Scotsman came, why the black people have red hair. Or the other story, no storm, no wrecked ship. Just the miles of cane fields and mulatto children named MacDonald or MacArthur for their fathers who owned them. Nothing grows at Lover's Leap where two runaways, cornered by their master, held hands and jumped down into the clouds. Errol drives me to the treasured beach. It's an old story, the terrible storm, swerving the bleak country roads, the ship going down, half the sailors. I think about what you will be, your mix drowned, half swimming, the white, black Chinese, and your father's slate waves spat hard on shore, Scottish Englishness. We crossed the Black River, smashed crates, bodies where they shipped cane sugar, and molasses choking on the dark sand. Upstream, past a sign, one man stands. What is this place? A woman for lover's leap. The air stinks of sulphur in the trees. One hand raised, Errol drops me at a green gate. Be safe. This is how the Scotsman came behind the house, the narrow beach where the black people have red hair of dark sand, the seawater warm and grey. Or the other story, no storm, I am deep before I know it, groundless, no wrecked ship, just the miles, the swell stops the sickness of cane fields and mulatto children named under a crooked tree, perched on sea rocks, MacDonald or MacArthur, for two fishermen in torn denims, smoking their fathers who owned them. I dry in the sun, they pass, turn, come close, nothing grows at lover's leap. They've rust afros, gold faces splashed with freckles, where two runaways, one edged in muscle, one with eyes cornered by their master, held hands like razors. What you want here, they say, and jump down into the clouds. Look at me, Ir dabar kviesiu mūsų artimiausią viešinę, Barbara Klitska iš Bažuvas. Ją lydi jos vertėjas, Vytas Dekšnys.
Hello. Przepraszam bardzo, ale ja będę mówiła po polsku. E, oszczędzę sobie w ten sposób nerwów, a Państwu moje kojąkania. Barbara Kalbiast Lankieszki, Psiech Tieksu to opis nerwu. I e, chciałam powiedzieć, że to jest też ważne, że Witas tu stoi ze mną, e, bo myślę, że tłumacze piszą pierwszy raz jeszcze tak naprawdę. I myślę, że to ważne, żeby mo mogli Państwo to usłyszeć. Kadangi vertėjai galima sakyti, rašo ir nerašius antrą kartą, tai tai svarbu ir visą tai išgirsti. A odpowiadając na pytanie, które jeszcze nie padło, <laughs> myślę, że chciałabym wspomnieć o dwóch autorkach. Krystynie Miłopańskiej, która jest papieżycą polskiej awangardy. I atsakydama į klausimą, kuris dar nie užduotas, tai prisiminė... Krystyna Miłabenska, kuri laikoma Lenkijos Lenko Vangardo pirmąją damą. I drugą taką autorką jest Elizabeth Bishop, którą na pewno chciałabym wziąć na bezludną wyspę. Da tikrai pasimtą į negyvenumą salą Elizabeth Bishop. To co, czytamy? Well, maybe for the people who can't speak uh, neither Polish or um, uh, Lithuanian, I'll try to, <laughs> if I quote it well in Polish, like uh, two um, uh, female authors were mentioned, um, uh, Polish avant-garde uh, writer. Krystyna Miłopanska. And Elizabeth Bishop. Krystyna <laughs> Miłopanska. That you could understand. Yeah. Wielkanoc. Początek jak z przepisu na wiosnę. Jechałam w długą podróż z szybkim samochodem. Wszędzie były chmury. Doceniałam walor szyby rydachu. Mijaliśmy bociany, więc powiedziałam, patrz, bociany. Powiedział, cieszysz się jak dziecko. Głupi, powiedziałam. Cieszy się jak dziecko, bo mówisz do mnie jak do kobiety w kwietniu. Bądź mi przyjacielem, chcę tego świecić. Potem... Wezwałam na świadków miejscowych, maile, balety. Wszystko w dość dużych ilościach, bo nic, uparcie nie chciało mi starczać. Ale nic. Nadciąga bowiem kalendarzowe zmartwychwstanie. Z tej okazji niosę światu sernik. Niech kocha mnie każdy, skoro ty nie możesz. Delikos. Prodzieligisz pawasę recepto. Važiavau ilgo ant kelionį greitai eigi automobiliu, visur buvo dėvesuota, įsitikinau koks pravartus pakeliamas togas. Pravažiavome gandrus, taigi tariau, žiūrėk, gandrai, atsakė, džiūgau į kaip vaikas. Kvailysa, kaip džiaugiuosi kaip vaikas, nes kalbi su mani mylik su moterim balandį, būk man draugas, noriu švietėti nuo viso to. Paskui kviečiau stiliudininkais čionykščius, elektroninius laiškus, baletą, Visą ko gana dideliais kiekiais, nes niekaip nenorėjo man pakakti. Nieko tokio, jų kartėja kalendorinis prisikėrimas. Ta proga nešu pasauliui varškės piragą. Tegu myli mane kiekvienas, jei tau neišeina. Surai de Rotskveru. Bądź pozdrowiona, Surai de Rotskveru, na który nie mam okiem. Bądź pozdrowiona, bo nie chcę dziś wracać do siebie. Ty jesteś w śniegu, a ja w obcej kuchni, moja droga Surajder, na dzikim zachodzie. Niedługo samo południe, więc się z tobą spotkam. Spotkamy się, Surajder, wezmę papierosy. Teraz paznokciem zrywam z parapetu lakier, potem zrobię na odwrót. Lubisz manikury? Ja lubię, chociaż nie wypada, bo można by robić tyle ważkich rzeczy, a tu różbi skupi pędzelkiem po płytce. I trzeba uważać, bać się konsekwencji. Czeka nas kochana cichy obłok w ziemi. Na skwery za przystankiem trzeba zapracować. Kochana Surajder, a nawet wtedy nie możesz być pewna, bo szalety przy nim zostaną trójkątne. Ktoś może znaleźć w goglach twoje brzydkie zdjęcie. Bądź pozdrowiana, Surajder, bezpańska kowbojką. Już wszędzie nas nie ma. W kapownikach matek, w naszych własnych łóżkach, na końcówkach nerwów wielonocnych wrogów, jednonocnych braci. Już wszędzie nas nie ma. Więc się nie rozglądaj, moja smutna Surajder. Nie ma gdzie się szukać. Surajder i Skwero. Bóg was wejkiem ta Surajder i Skwero, i kurinia turi langu. 
buvo pasveikinta, nes nenoriu šiandien grįžti namo. Tu sniegos, o aš svetimo jo vertuvį, mėloji mano Sea Rider laukinėse vakaruose. Netrukus pats vidudienis, tad sutiksiu tave, susitiksiu Sea Rider, paimsiu cigarečių. Dabar negu graundau nuo palangės laką, paskui darysiu atvirkščiai, ar to patinka manikiūras. Man tai patinka, nors nederėtų, nes galima būtų daryti šį tiek svarbių dalykų. O čia viskų po purpuros teptukų per paviršių ir reikia būti atsargiai, nerimauti dėl to, kaip atrodys. Laukia mūsų mėloji tilus debesis žemėje. Skvelio štotelės reikia užsitarnauti. Mėlojas jų raido. Ir net tada negali būti tikra, nes iškils jame trikampės tupyklos. Dar kas nors suras googluose tavo bėjaurio nuotrauką. Būk pasveikintas jų raido. Kaubojo be šeminimko. Jo visur mūsų nėra. Motino už rašinėse, mūsų pačių lovose, daugia nakčių priešų, vieną nakčių brolių nervų galonėlėse. Jo visur mūsų nėra, tad nesidaryk liudnoji mano Sea Rider. Nėra kur ieškotis. Dabar tak. To był twój wieczór, niepożysty chłopcze. Malają ci oczy z wieczornym przypływem. Dawno oduczono mnie wyciągać ręce, więc kiedy wracam do domu przypadkowym taksi, myślę o całowaniu. Myślę o peronach, na, któ na których moglibyśmy się żegnać, gdybyśmy jakimś cudem jednak się spotkali. Och, to nie przesada. Czuję wolę Bożą w te zorzyste noce. Lecz w, dom w moim domu susza i zwiędłe paprotki. Nikt tu nie zachodzi. Zamknąć tu oczy znaczy patrzeć na łapki z soczystą słoniną. Znaczy mierzyć się z okazałym piętrem. Znaczy rogowacieć. Mógłbyś wejść we mnie tak jak w trzęsowisku. Nieparzysty chłopcze, tuż za bzem na skwerze. Cała moja limfa. Całą z ust do byty. Manta. Tai buvo tavo vakaras, ne porinis vaikinė. Mažėja tavo akis vakaroje atplūstant, senėje su atpratinta tiesti rankas, kad parvažiuodavo namo atsitiktinių taksi, galvoja apie bučinius, galvoja apie peronus, kuriuose galėtume atsisveikinti, jei per kokį nors cebuklą vis dėl to susitiktume. Ak neperdedu, jaučiu dievo valią tomis pašvaiščių naktimis, bet mano namuose saustra ir nuvytę paparčiai niekas čia neužėjimo. Užsimerti čia, vadinasi žiūrėti į sultingais lašiniais užtaisytus pelėkautus. Vadinasi galinėti su paršmatniu viršutiniu aukštu, vadinasi ragėti. Galėtum įbristi mane lygi raistą. Nepornį svaikinę, čia patų žalyvas skveria visą mano limfą. Įkapės iš lūpų iš gautos. Lokus fokus. Miałaś raciją, ledwo się przyznając. Twoja matka z odległości znów obcina włosy na bardzo krótko, chociaż jest jeszcze młoda, chociaż kiedy chadzę do parków, mrówki używają jej kciuków jak gładkich drabin. Macha do ojca, w dłoni trzyma chustkę z gliny. Wieczne pożegnanie. Córki są takie przemądrzałe, gdy długo nie rodzą i nie kończą studiów. To nie jej przypadek. Ma magisterium i dzieci. Dzieworództwo w działaniu. Ale motyle z ich brzucha mieszkają na odległych łąkach. Nawet słowa łąka używa się tutaj na lekkim przydechu, jak wielu innych słów, które nie znajdą nigdy godnych odbić. Zakradaj się do piwnic, na strychy. Na zagrzanych grzędach nocuje twój mol, dziewczynko. W ciemni się trzęsiesz, na słońcu prześwietlasz te klisze, więc jeśli rankingować strachy, słowo mąż wysunie się wyraźnie na czoło. A przez czoło lepiej jest przeciągnąć kosmyk, jak wtedy, kiedy przy jakiejś poręczy chciałeś się całować, ale zabrakło ci, bo ja wiem, wdzięku, odwagi, za maszystej kiecki. Och, wiem, wolisz sama wbijać w siebie choćby wykałaczki, bo jedna wiesz, jak daleko stąd do płynnego życia, na które nie masz żadnego dowodu. I chociaż zakładam, że kłamiesz, ty kłamiesz w jakimś letnim parku na ławce w półcieniach, Grzebiesz sobie w oku zakażoną drzazką i nic się nie zmienia. Locus focus. Buvai teisi vien prisipažindama. Tavo motina iš tolo vėl apsikia paplaukus labai trumpai. Nors tebe yra jauna, nors kai vaikšto po parkus, skrūt dėlės kopijos nykščiais tarsi lygiomis kopiečiomis. Mojoje tėvui rankoje laiko ilginį nuo nosinio. Amžinas atsisveikinimas. Dukros pasidaro tokios gudreivos, kai ilgai negimdo ir nebaigia studijų. 
Tai ne jos atvejais, jį baigia magistrą ir turi vaikų, tikrai įsikūnijus nekautai pradėtoji. Bet jos pilvo draugeliai gyvena tolimuose pievose. Nežodis pieva čia tarima šiek tiek aspirojant, kaip daugelis žodžių, kurie niekad neįgis tinkamo atspindžių. Įsigauk į rusus į paliepęs, ant išilų su laktų. Na, kvoja tavo mol, mergaitė. Tamsai drebi prieš saulę peršvieti tas klišės. Taigi įreitinguotum tai, ko bijai, žodis vyras akivaizdžiai išlysto į priekį. O per priekį jų geriau permesti srogą. Kaip tada, kai prie kažkokių turėklų norėjo bučiuotis, bet pritruko tau ką žinau, žavės, atrasos, smagaus sijono, ak suprantu, bet čia pati badysi save, kad ir dantų kraštukais. Nors tu vienai žinai, kaip toli nuo čia iki takaus gyvenimo, kurio neturi jokių įrodymų. Ir nors darau prielaidą, kad meluoji, tu meluoji. Kokiame nors parke vasarą ant solelio pusiau šešėliuose, kraštais į akį užkriesta rakštim ir niekas nesikeičia. Pravau jėsta. Dživna te datą į dživnį las. Dživna žymovą sarkofagį mirovą tad dėmė. Mūvėš, nikt nikdai ne umarų. Mūvė, mūžas su biša favač kvitininėm guogų dovolį. Nic z tego ne bendė. Lepiej chodźmy do auta i obszejmy głowę. Wojrota pažymiejmas. Keistos tos datos ir keistas miškas, keisti žymos skrūždžių sarkofagą jame. Sakai, niekas niekada nemiri. Sakau, gali kiek nori išvaistytis gudobelės žydėjimų, nieko iš to neišės. Verčiau įmė į automobilį ir atremkime galvas. Orbi. Taka skonność, że nie docenia się światła i świata. Owszem, jeleń albino zdrepcze przez listopad. Kała marnice bywają inteligentniejsze niż koty i z obcego opuszka do głębi potrafi dotrzeć najszczerszy skarabeusz. Owszem, deszcz na asfalcie zmienia się w rtęć. Rtęć ją w łzę, łza w sen. Sen w historię o ptaka, które nad temperaturą ciała kręcą te wszystkie salta. A potem dziobią cię w oczy i w usta. We wdech. I wydech. Orbi. Toks polinkis, kai negana vertinama šviesai pasaulis. Žinoma, Elnės Albinosas trepsi per lapkritį, kalmarai būna protingesni už kartes ir nuo svetimo piršto galiuko iki pat gelmių geba pasiekti tikriausias skarabėjas. Žinoma, lietus ant asfalto virsta gyvsidabriu. Gyvsidabris ašara, ašara sapnu. Sapnas pasakojim apie paukščius, viršunkų nuo temperatūros sukančius tos visus salto. O paskui jie kerta tau jėkis ir į lūpas, į kvėpimą ir iš kvėpimą. Vypaunėnė. Vežmė nas čas po mėndze. V šnė byl bankit į skūrą. Struna v plecak nie vydawa dźwięku. Asfalt jeszcze nie wysechł, tor tylko nam do palców, lukier do podbródka. Miałeś nagi piersi i splątany język po środku przyjęcia. Tańczyłaś, a przecież po południu daje się rodzinie. Danina, nie dancing, kto nie wie, ten ginie lub ma się źle. Więc twoje serce pełno się nowych kołków, więc głowy pod kran, kolana pod brudkę. I co by się stało, gdyby widzieć więcej, gdyby było jaśniej? A zatem grzęznąć oraz zwiedzać parki. W mętne popołudnia haftować spokoje na obcych tamborkach, nabrać płuc róży i zajmować przykład. Dlatego czas między wypełnić na jeszczenie, żeby nie porą. Jeśli porwie, to mi. Uśpildas. Po im smus laikas i tarpa. Sapnia było po kiedyś i roda. Stiga nugaroja nieźle i do garso, asfalta dar nie iździuwo, tortas lipo prie pirštu, głaistas prie smakro. Tavo krūtis buvo nuogos ir pinės į ležuvės per patį pokelio vidurį. Šokai, o juk popitės skiriamas šeimai. Duoklė nešokio aikštelio. Kas nežino, tas žūsta arba tam prastai klojasi. Taigi tavo širdis prismaikstytos apušės maigų. Tad galvas po čiaupų, kelius po smakru. Ir kas nutiktų, jei daugiau žinotum, jei būtų šviesiau. Todėl, klimti ir lankyti sparkuose. Ukanotomis patėmis suvinėti ramybę ant svetimų lankelių. Prisitraukti į plaučius tuštumos ir nuimti pavyzdį. Todėl, laiko tarpus užpildyti kuos ant dariau, kad tavęs nenuneštų. O jei nuneš, skesk. Dankiui.
Sveči Barbarai, na ir kviesime mūsų paskutinį šias dienos svečią Tomica Vaisič iš Kroatijos ir jį taip pat vertė Laima Masytė. You already know the drill. I'm sure you have the poem ready. Yeah, of course, but you know, like it's... Uh, first of all, I, I, I would like to say uh, that uh, it feels very good to be here in, in Lithuania. I have met so many interesting uh, poets yesterday and today Lithuanian and, of course, international and so on. And thank uh, my fellow thanks to the translators for their job. And about this poem, so it would be very unfair, you know, to cite one poem, but I it was encountered Czechovich in Reda to Pozna. The second will be the post-colonial poem. This is a newer one. When I started to to walk around some poetry, poetry European festivals and visiting the, uh, the big Postkolonijalna pjesma. Lavovi na trgu Trafalgar u Londonu, u četvrti Parnas i svuda po Parizu, na grobu kralja Richarda u katedrali u Ruenu, u parku Tiergarten i otoku muzeja u Berlinu. Na lančanom mostu Budimpešte čuvaju ulaz u kraljevsku palaču u Beseu. Drijemaju u podnožju spomenika Kolumbu u Barceloni, žongliraju na trgu Markiza Pombala u Lisabonu. Još davno su kamenim pogledima ispračivali brodove istočno-indijske kompanije iz Amsterdama. Ovdje ih ima više nego u Africi i Indiji. Prestolnice bivših evropskih imperija ne krase ni dupini, ni ptice, nego lavovi, čija snaga njihova samoća. Kao dvanestogodišnjak klizao sam jedno oštre zime za leženim jezerom Maksimijskog parka pokraj Zološkog vrta. Na jezeru nije bilo nikak osim mene. Ispod jednog od mostova osjetio sam kod ulaza u nastavu prisutnost lava, čija me Rika zaostavila u mjestu. I kada ti se čini da te vide, nisi u pravu. Lavovi zapravo gledaju ravno kroz tvoje kosti, kroz zidove, rešetke i drveće, preko jezera gdje sam plizao, pa do rimskog koloseuma i dalje, prostranstvima urezanim duboko u njihovom morju. Pogled im počiva u savanama Afrike prije kolonija. The dictators. Diktatori. Diktatori defiliraju poput figurica u mehaničkom cirkusu. Taj vrtuljak ne pokreće električna ili neka druga umjetna energija, pokreće ga naša volja ili nedostatak volje. Budu svrgnuti od zamora materijala ili od sebi sličnih, budu pojedeni, ubiju se ili žive mirnu starost. Ali naša ih pohlepa reciklira, utjelovljeni su promašenim nadama naših mladosti. Fires came and gone, it's a poem that is dedicated to, to my older brother, who died in, in Rio de Janeiro. He spent all his, almost all his life there. And it is also the poem who is de dedicated to all immigrants because we are, we are a country of immigrants. Every fourth creation lives abroad on far sides of the world. Vatri su došle i otišle. Bratu Vladimiru, koji je s majkom kao petogodišnja je potpovio za Dazir i nikada se više nije vratio za Adru. Povici i reski glasovi neste u tišini pepela iz gorjeloga drveća. Došla je kiša, ali zaborava nije otkud. U zamasima, poput klatna, tupa svjetlo zbori. Vatre su došle i otišle. Ali vratit će se poput mora koji ne može zabraviti svoje obale. Ležao sam na balkonu u mreži na spavanje i drijemao. Negdje ulicom prošao je kamion muklo od zvanježi porukama. Zazvučalo je kao da zazidane duše lupaju s druge strane. Nago sam otvorio oči. 
Pokopali smo mog brata u Rio de Janeiro na groblju San Bento. Nakon što sam položio kovčeg u rupu, u zidu djelatne groblja je u nekoj povješljih poteza špahtom zacementirao pukotine. Pitao sam ga pod kojim se brojem vodi ta gaveta, a nije mi odgovorio. Drugi djelatnik je prišao i krenuo na ploči podebljao broj. 21, rekao je. 21, rekao sam svima ostalima iza sebe, gledajući oštra crna brda kišni šuma planinskog glanca orgulja, gdje pod konkarnim nebom megalopolisa dišu milioni duša, od kojeg mnogi nemaju ni imena ni broja, kao potrebe svog postojanja. I sjetio sam trenutno slabost u koljenima i pomislio je ipak kako neka stavla, kada izgore, postaju hlad zemlje, nestaju u sjeni, no ima ih koji nakon što izgore, ostaju s nama uvijek, jer ljubav koju su imali ostaje žeravica koje se nikako ne da ugasiti. The man fell on the street from black, from red plague, it's a poem that I wrote after the war, I tried to, to bring my family, my children, small children, my wife to Brazil uh, and uh, to build a house with my brother who had also three children and to, to leave this post-apocalyptic, post-war uh, society and to cut the ropes with homeland. But I didn't make it because my brother's son got sick and they went to Minas Gerais to England and so it, it, it haven't worked. Čovjek je pao na ulici od crvene kuge. Ivana, sagradit ću ti kuću od pigmentiranog brazovskog drva. To je drvo koje ne gubi borbu s vremenom. Kuću bez tvrdih kutova u jednoj staroj luci iz doba zlatne groznice. U potrezi zlatom sve je dozvoljeno. To je mala kolonijalna luka s tri crkve. Jedna je crkva crnih grobova, druga slobodnih mulata, a treća je crkva bijelih zemlj posljednika. Ime te luke je Parači. Ulazna vrata će biti takva da kroz njih ne prolazi prošlost. Zidovi će biti obloženi knjigama, samo vrijedni knjigama, tisućama knjiga. Biće to knjigi Melila, Konrada, Stevensona i ostalih ukorilih pustolova. Sagradit će ti kuće ovo drva kojeg ne može izgresti sol i otvrnuti sunce. Tu će biti kuća sa dugačkim istočnim prozorima koji će se otvarati na brde šume i parni vlak koji vodi rudnicima, a sa zapadne strane turbinom ćeš vidjeti francusku utvrdu napravljenu za obranu od pirata i prolaz kojim se ide, ide između otoka. Jest ćemo velike ribe lovljene u moru, jedan na jedan. Tvoj život će biti lak. Toliko lak da će ti oči postati bistri smaragdi koji umjesto šumskih jagoda rastu pod humusom matogrosa. Da, prozori će uvijek biti otvoreni i zastri će putovati hodnicima. Bijeli poput haljena stari bajanki koje šapuću kandombl. A u stropu će probiti staklenu rupu i djeca će sanjati duboke snove po tim južnim križem. And the last poem uh, in the booklet, it's also from the old, it's like uh, we have got it together all again, it's like It's a poem of my reconnaissance unit in the war. Small unit, many of these people haven't survived the war. Some of them I have never seen again. Some had very strange destinies. But it's like I caught this fragment in time, like to, to have their existences placed in this poem. Našli smo se opet svi zajedno. U snu mi je došlo da smo se našli opet svi zajedno za dugačkim drvenim stolom, postavljenim negdje u pustoši u planini, za bijelim drvenim stolom s karivenim stoljnakom crvenih šara, oko nas visela nam visoka trava. Sjedimo tihi, koncentrirane i prozirane limunove cvjetove koje lebde muklim sibenskim nebom. Padaju u čaše iz kojih pijemo, padaju se za blato naših uniformi klize, niz led našeg oruđa, nestaju travi, oštrih sunčevih bridva, prepetane oko naših čizama starih nekoliko tisuća godina. Neki od nas piju čisto je miješan vino s radenskom nabijenom mineralima, kvarcnim kristalima, hučićim vodopadima. Neki u vino doljevaju običnu vodu, na stolu je vrć koji se puni na bunaru, vodom bistrom, poput zraka koji nas okružuje kroz čiju prazninu vidim raspukline u snjegovima koji se tope na najudaljenijim vrhovima crnih staklenih planina. Gledajući odavde, sasvim je očito da je zemlja okrugla. Slani vjetar koji se noću digao s mora, šulja se plošno površeno na nevidljivim labrintima s namjerom da iznad njemačkog ovčara, graničara neprijateljske patrole, zaspalog u sjeni jedinog drva na visoravni. 
Nikome od nas nije previše stalo do pasa. Palim cigaretu, šibicu, bacam u travu, duham i ulazi pluća s navom koja muti vid. Sjedimo bez riječi, pod noga nam negdje duboko pod zemljom ključa lava budućih vulkana. Tlo se rodilo nakon što se zarobljeno snijegom, prekriveno cijede zime, prevrtalo, crpilo iz mrtvih organizama, obnavljalo, probijalo korijene, skrušavalo i širilo, stvaralo iznamke gorkih boja. Sjedimo spokojno, gledajući kako rastu podovi panjskog limuna. Hrana na stolu je skromna, kao što je uvijek bila, nekoliko kruhova, tridesetak tvrdo kuhanih jaja, tu su i mape, zemljopisne karte nekih drugih područja, plus sedam, motrolin, radio uređaja, pet šest prvih zavoja, četiri, tri noćne i cervizira, dnevna dalekozora, sedam vojnih buslova, koji ne pokazuju nigdje sigurno. Thank you very much. Ačiū visiems mūsų šios dienos skaitytojams ir mes šio su Marku padarėm tokį nelidelį tyrimą, jeigu teisingai suskaičiavom, iš sektinių įkvėpėjų buvo keturios moteris. Poetas. Ja, Ruta Meir, Berlin, Lidin, Lidl Statistics. I think, if I'm not wrong, seven poets were mentioned, seven poems, four of which were women and oh, three were men. So kind of in accordance to the theme of the, this uh, year's edition of the festival, uh, it seems that uh, women are women. Thank you.